I had a message recently asking which of these two mics I'd recommend. So in this video, I'm going to tell you all there is to know about their sound quality, the noise floor, and how they reject unwanted sounds. We're going to test record into the Tascam DL40X and also direct the camera. And finally, we'll compare the NTG using phantom power and its own internal battery. <laughs> Hey, I'm Ben, and in this series we're taking a look at the gear and the techniques that I use when recording videos. I hope that you'll find them helpful if you're looking to improve your own recordings. My channel is just starting to grow, and I'm trying to put out new content every week, so please hit like and subscribe as it will really help me out. So the VideoMic Pro and the NTG2 are distinctly different tools used for different purposes. One is an XLR mic for broadcast quality recordings, often used on a boom. The other is a high-end mic specifically for DSLRs. But if you're on a budget, they can be picked up for a similar price and used interchangeably for the same types of jobs. So which is the best all-rounder? The NTG2 is the entry-level 11-inch short-range shotgun mic that gives a clear, accurate sound and a good amount of rejection. <laughs> There's the bin lorry, I don't know if you can hear that. The VideoMic Pro is also one of Rode's most popular models, and it's an active supercardoid mic powered by a 9-volt battery. Its small lightweight design is for attaching to the hot shoe of your camera. The half inch condenser capsule is identical to the latest Pro Plus model, so the sound quality is actually the same, the major difference being that the new model comes with a rechargeable lithium battery. The NTG2 is made in a durable aluminium housing, which does a decent job of masking much of the handling noise. It has a low cut filter set at 80Hz for handling low frequency background rumble, but I don't like the switch. You can't access it without some sort of tool as it's recessed into the housing, so that might be a consideration for you if you regularly work in different noisy environments and have to be switching between one and the other. It's got a nice XLR connector on the base and the cable plugs in with a reassuringly solid clunk. The VideoMic Pro's plastic housing weighs just 86 grams and it measures at 15 centimeters long. It comes with a Rycote Lyre shock mount that deals with handling noise really well, and a 3.5mm jack for direct connection. The 9 volt battery will give you enough juice for 70 hours of recording, but don't forget to turn it on and off when you start and finish, or you'll be doing retakes and draining the battery because it doesn't do this automatically. Changing the battery is a real pain, the compartment door is fiddly and it's easy to drop it. A top tip is to pull the windshield off first because it makes it a lot more accessible. There's a high pass filter, a minus 10 decibel pad for noisy environments, and best of all, a 20 decibel active boost function. This is really useful as most DSLRs have poor noisy preamps, so you can turn the camera preamp down to the minimum and make the most of the VideoMic Pro's clean boosted signal. The VideoMic Pro has been switched to boost to give it the optimum signal, as this is what I do in real life recordings. The levels have been balanced to be identical, and both peaking is around about minus 12 decibels. You're currently listening to the VideoMic Pro boosted, and this is what the VideoMic Pro sounds like without the boost and the gain raised in the Tascam. Now compare it to the NTG2 at the same amount of gain. You're hearing this before I do, but I expect that you can hear that the VideoMic Pro is noticeably cleaner with the boost activated. So before I tell you which mic I think is the best all-rounder, I'll read some sentences to compare the quality and the noise of the two mics. I'll switch between the different possible configurations as I go. So what I'll do is use 10 short sentences that were actually designed by Harvard engineers to test the speech attributes of microphones during World War II. By using all of the core syllables used in words, they cover every possible noise made during conversation. The birch canoe slid on the smooth planks. Glue the sheet to the dark blue background. It's easy to tell the depth of a well. These days, a chicken leg is a rare dish. Rice is often found served in bowls. The juice of lemons makes fine punch. Four hours of steady work faced us. Large size in stockings is hard to sell. Four hours of steady work faced us. Large size in stockings is hard to sell. Four hours of steady work faced us. Large size in stockings is hard to sell. So in this next test, I'm going to test the rejection of the microphones. So that is how well it ignores the sound behind it while picking up the sound in front of it. So what I've done is I've set up my wonder boom. I'm going to have it reasonably loud, uh, about two meters behind the backs of both of the microphones, whilst I'm reading out the same sentences. The birch canoe slid on the smooth planks. Glue the sheet to the dark blue background. It's easy to tell the depth of a well. These days, a chicken leg is a rare dish. Rice is often found served in round bowls. The juice of the lemons makes fine punch. The box was thrown beside the parked truck. The hogs were fed chopped corn and garbage. Four hours of steady work faced us. Large size in stockings is hard to sell. That 
was actually quite difficult to do because I can only just about hear my own voice over the noise of the wonder boom. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that sounds. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is re-rig the microphones so that they're recording directly into the camera. I'm going to have to do this one at a time because I can only plug one microphone in at a time to the camera. Um, but they're both going to be running on their own battery power. Um, so really for the Video Mic Pro, it's going to be the same, um, but direct camera rather than task cam. But the NTG2 is going to be running on its own battery rather than phantom power, being plugged directly into the camera with a 3.5mm to XLR adapter. Okay, Video Mic Pro, boosted 20 decibels, plugged into the XTT2 which is set to the minimum gain. The birch canoe slid on the smooth planks. Glue the sheet to the dark blue background. It's easy to tell the depth of a well. These days, a chicken leg is a rare dish. Rice is often served in round bowls. The juice of lemons makes fine punch. The box was thrown beside the parked truck. The hogs were fed chopped corn and garbage. Four hours of steady work faced us. Large size in stockings is hard to sell. So all in all, you can't go wrong with either of these mics, but I do think that the NTG2 has clearly got the better sound quality and build quality. The Video Mic Pro has got a slightly unnatural bass boost and a slightly harsher sibilance. The signal output of the NTG2 is quite low, making it not the ideal mic for recording direct to camera, but put it for a nice preamp and this thing rocks. The Video Mic Pro is so easy to use and fit to a DSLR, and the 20 decibel boost makes up for noisy camera preamps and it takes up hardly any room in your camera bag, making it my choice for taking out on location. But at the end of the day, the NTG2 with its low noise circuitry has better fidelity, sounding balanced, rich, flat and clear. To my ears, it does a better job of rejecting unwanted sounds too. I feel that if you're just going to choose one mic, my money would have to be on the NTG2. So which mic do you think sounds best to your ears? Let me know and ask any questions in the comments below. If you liked this, please hit like and subscribe and help me to get to my first 100 subscribers. See you on the next one.